Hi, I'm Amy Long with Red Carpet Report. At the premiere of The Death of Superman Lives, what happened? It's the Nick Cage Superman movie that wasn't. <laughs> what an exciting night for you, though, right? Yes, very fun. Very excited. Um, everybody's lined up, waiting to say hello. And uh, tell me a little bit about this uh, production. Well, it's, it was just really, it's a, it was an idea I had. Like, you know, I would like to find out more about this movie. And I'd been collecting production art online. and. Just the idea of what they were trying to do with this film, to me, was kind of different, exciting, seeing the concept art. It was it was just different enough that it made me interested in finding out more. I was like, there's got to be more art than what's been online. So, you know, doing this documentary kind of pushed me to find out more, raised money on Kickstarter. So I was like, all right, now I'm, I've got money to try to make this thing. And it took a lot longer. It took way longer to actually be able to actually make it than I thought. I, got, I went broke three times, totally penniless. Uh, so yeah, maybe I'll, on a special features of the DVD, it'll be like you, every interview you'll see like flush, totally broke, devastated, penniless, you know, stuff like that. So, but uh, it, it, in the end run, it's it's all been worth it. It's been like, you know, making a sculpture, putting the clay together, and then removing different parts and rearranging it. That's a, that's the process of uh, making a documentary. Versus, I come from scripted television as a director, so I'm used to taking scripts and then adding my two cents to it and making it visually how I want. But the script is there. This was completely unscripted and moved around and, oh, well, let's uh, move this, What if, uh, move this part over here. Let's sit with the beginning and the middle and rearrange this. And, and as we added more interviews, the story changed and it evolved. So it's been this constant evolution over the last two years. So very happy that it really came together like three months ago and then it was just really like racing and trying to get it done by May 1st and here we are, April 30th, the red carpet, so. You made it before, right? Yes. Uh, the most drastic turn for me, I think, was when I interviewed Tim Burton, because it really, it really started to form into the story that it is now. Up until that point, I, I was able to get interviews with a lot of the artists, the concept designers, who are just have just their smaller perspective. They're not part of the entire whole. They're like, well, Tim had me design Doomsday, or Tim was having me work on Brainiac. So they weren't involved in all of the story or the casting or the decision making, how what Nick Cage was going to be like in the thing. So Tim was the was the was the was, was the turning point where I, I got uh, you know insight into so much, got incredible footage, amazing things that I didn't know anything about, and then that gave me the impetus to keep moving forward and like get all these other people who were involved in the film. So. No, I, I think it was a, it's a product of its time, uh, and you don't have to make the movie because you could watch my film and see all the different versions of Doomsday and all the different versions of Brainiac and what they were going to try to do in this version of the story or that version of the story. I'd love to see it done in some iteration, but to be honest with you, there was never a finished script. It was like all these different scripts that had the kind of the same story, but different takes on it. You know, so you had Kevin Smith's version, you had Wesley Strick's version, then you had Dan Gilroy's, and there was like one or two other writers after Tim Burton left, but you know, I was like, I'm just gonna cover this section called Superman Lives, and then it turned into other things, and then obviously J.J. Abrams came on and was gonna do his thing. So there's all these different versions, but to me, this was the, was the pinnacle of everything different, and then eventually it became Man of Steel. I mean, Superman returns, and then Man of Steel, so. My all-time favorite documentary? All-time favorite film and documentary. Oh, well, you know what? I don't have an all-time favorite film, or I love all films uh, individually, and I don't like I don't try to separate them into the best film. Like, I have the film experiences, like you gotta see 2001, A Space Odyssey. You gotta see Citizen Kane. You gotta see The Godfather. You gotta see Jaws, Raiders of the Lost Ark. There's all these different films. And then there's like, so there's like all these different kinds of interpretations of films. So I don't have one particular film that, you know, one of my favorite films, not all time favorites, is Blade Runner. I love that. We're only four years away from the future of Blade Runner. Where's my flying car and where's my replicants? But, you know, when you think about that, that was such a, a film that's so ahead of its time that even now it's still futuristic. So, I mean, but you see certain things happening in that film now that, you know, back then were just mind blowing, but now we're going to, we're almost close to having robots doing our dishes for us, you know, so.
Um, both. I mean, as a, just as an artist, I mean, I like the idea of different concept drawings and, and trying different things. As a comic book fan, I, I like the possibilities of the what if. To me, it's like it was like Nicolas Cage being Superman was just like Michael Keaton being Batman. All these fans had the outrage and like it's gonna suck, and then when it came out, they were like, "Wow, it's great!" It's like everyone has to learn to just take a big deep breath and relax. It's only a two-hour movie, you know. Enjoy it, let it happen first, then judge it, you know. So that's kind of we still have that happen all the time. We still have that people are judging judging Ben Affleck as Batman. Oh, this is gonna suck! And I was like, man, just uh, last year when that happened, I was like, come on, you don't know it's gonna suck. Oh, it was horrible. Look at a daredevil. What is that? And now the trailer comes out and everybody's like, oh my God, Ben Affleck's amazing. It's just like that. It's like that. Flip flopping. So. Put it in their face and they'll take it, right? Well, I think it's like, let them see it right. and then they'll be like, oh, that's what they were doing. Right. I think comic book fans hold stuff very close to their chest. They're, they don't like to see things change. And I, being a comic book fan, I'm a little on the opposite side of that. I like to see change, I like to see different things. Because it's like, you can always read the other comics. Let's see a different version of that. So that's why I like movies, because they're not comic books anyway. You can never have the experience of reading a comic book if you go see a movie. It's totally the opposite thing. So many people who are into superhero movies have never read a comic book. So I do a lot of talk shows now where I talk about cool comic book series from the 70s or 80s or 90s that you should read. And it, it makes me feel good when I get tweets like, dude, I just read Miracle Man. It's fantastic. I'm like, that's right. So, well, thank you for bringing yeah. this life for us. Right on. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, like, subscribe, and comment. And we'll see you next time.